two of the best games from this year are about to get much better. Ghost of Tsushima is getting co-op. Control is doing a tie-in with Alan Wake. Oh boy, I'm excited. Let's dig into it. What's going on guys? Holy crap, I just woke up to some awesome news. I pulled up my phone right out of bed today. Oh my god, what is Ghost of Tsushima Legends? Like, what is this? I knew there'd be a major update. I did not expect this. We are getting four player co-op, a survival based and even new story in Ghost of Tsushima. Are you kidding me? That is not at all what I expected from a fucking Sony single player exclusive game. That is not at all what I expected. This is incredible. I don't think they've ever done something similar to this. Like in the past, I know Horizon Zero Dawn was supposed to be co-op or originally planned to be co-op, but it couldn't quite handle it. So this is a great way for them to do a different take on it because it's a completely separate mode. It's not the full story or you can't run around on the island with your buddy and do everything. This is the secondary option that will work much better, at least, you know, it's smoothness wise and gameplay wise, like it, it will functionally work better because split screen in a giant map is not always uh, ideal for consoles that we have now. Um, this is awesome, guys. I am overly excited. Um, so let's dig into this, the details a little bit. Um, I'm over on Engadget.com right now. Um, so, Ghost of Tsushima Legends is less about playing in an open world and exploring the natural beauty of the island, and is more about haunting and fantastical things. Okay, right off the punch, uh, Sucker, pu <laughs> Sucker Punch <laughs> senior game designer, Darren Bridges, is just throwing it right at us like yo this is not what you expect all right the developer took inspiration from japanese folktales and mythology for the two-player story and four-player survival missions the two-player missions tap into the combat fundamentals from the main campaign but there are new magical twists that often require careful synchronization with your partner whoa i love the sound of that you can play with your friends or let Ghost of Tsushima match you up with other players. The modes are completely separate from the main game. You won't play as Jin or his companions. You'll be able to pick from four classes, Samurai, Hunter, Ronin, and Assassin. Sucker Punch will reveal their abilities and customization options in the coming months. As well, the story and survival missions the latter of which include Oni enemies with supernatural abilities. Okay, so this is very interesting. Um, right off the top, we see that they're going in a completely different direction than the main game. Um, I think it's really cool that we're going to get like a co-op story. So you and one friend can go around and enjoy a new story in this amazing universe. Um, and then a survival mode with four players and there's four different classes this is going to be so unique and different than anything we've seen especially coming from a game like this like i almost wondered when i was playing it because i love the game and it was almost perfect like and that's the key word here almost perfect i felt like there was something missing or like there wasn't quite the amount of detail in the game that it felt like there should be. And now I understand why. Um, because they didn't solely want this to be a single player game. It wasn't solely focused on that main story. As good as it was, as incredible as the game was, it felt slightly off. And now I get it. They put a lot of their development work into this and that is awesome. Now, I saved the last thing and the most important thing here. Oh boy, there's going to be a raid. There will be a four-player raid that'll go live soon after Ghost of Tsushima Legends rolls out. 
you and your teammates will venture to an entirely new realm to challenge a brutal, terrifying enemy. Oh boy. Raid in Ghost of Tsushima. This game just turned into a whole new game. Like, it, what? Let's go, boys. I'm super, super excited about this. Like, there's a, a full blog post by the um, senior designer, Darren Bridges. Um, I believe it is over on, let me see, yes, it's on the PlayStation blog. So if you want to check that out and read in detail what he mentioned, um, this is super exciting for me. I'm a little bit at a loss for words, just found out about it. There's not too, too much information, but they dropped the trailer and a blog post. This is incredible, guys. Um, I'm definitely super excited about this one. I, I hope to see you guys on the battlefield with this one. I, I really do. This is, woo, let's go. Oh, man. Two-player co-op story and a four-player survival mode in one of my favorite games this year. I literally said this game hit my top five instantaneously. It's probably going to go well past that now. Top three for sure after playing this mode. All right. Let's roll on to this next story. I'm a little too excited about Ghost of Tsushima, but this next game I'm just as excited about because Control has the new DLC, AWE, coming out in literally 10 days. This is awesome. Um, this storyline is really cool. I'm pretty sure AWE stands for Alan Wake Edition or Alan Wake Expansion or something along those lines oh no no i'm sorry altered world events but the aw always makes me think of alan wake because this this ties in to the alan wake storyline um the trailer even shows him at the very end um i don't know if you guys are too familiar with alan wake but it was actually a xbox exclusive title from a few years back um so this is very interesting uh control was one of my top games of this year top games of the entire generation such an incredible game definitely had its ups and downs when it, in regards to you know the game like the gameplay smoothness and stuff but a lot of that was fixed in recent updates and now with this update we are getting this is going to be like the big big one um expansion one they had a lot of things to fix they fixed those things and then they added a good you know nice fun survival mode and a new areas to explore and stuff but this one is going to be huge. Cutting into the story, I'm super excited for this. Um, as I said, like it, it's tying into the Alan Wake world, which is made by Remedy Games. So they are very invested in this story. Um, I think they're going to be very detailed in what happens in this DLC. If you are a fan of Control, I definitely recommend getting the Season Pass now. Um, there's a lot of sales going on for it. If you haven't gotten control, there's an ultimate edition coming out for it. Um, the first expansion was cool, but this one is going to be huge. Like I said, this uh, so right here I'm reading the synopsis. The second expansion, AWE, will take Jesse into a new part of the oldest house, the investigation sector, where the bureau closely examines altered world events. As director of the Federal Bureau of Control, Jesse Faden busts enter the investigation sector and confront the creature lurking within this long abandoned part of the bureau. This threat has haunted the sector for years, waiting on the other side of the sealed firebreak. In order to reclaim the investigation sector from its clutches, Jesse will need to explore the numerous altered world events investigated here, including one from the town of Bright Falls, which is the town and the setting of Alan Wake. This is very interesting. Um, yeah, another big bad enemy. A uh, whole new section of the map. This one's going to be huge. As I said, comes out in 10 days, August 27th. Can't wait for this one. 100% recommend Control out to anyone out there who has not played it yet. And if you don't have the season pass, get that because you are going to want to level up. You're going to want to get everything set up. You're going to want to beat Expansion 1 before you dive into this because you're gonna need those level ups and those powers to take on what I expect will be the hardest enemies in the game so far. All right, now on to the next one. This this is a very interesting story. Um, it's a little 
touch and go. Um, I don't want to dig into it too much because it's a little controversial. You know me, I don't like dealing with all that BS. Um, so, Apple is being sued by Epic Games. I'm sure some, some of you have heard of this. Um, a lot of people are hating on Epic Games for it. A lot of people are hating on Apple for it. Um, it's a very controversial topic, like I said. Um, so, the series of events, as I know them, is Fortnite set up a deal um, on their store for V-Bucks that you could buy V-Bucks directly from Epic Games for $8 or buy them in the regular way through Apple for $10. So, obviously, everyone's going to buy the $8 one because it's the same fucking thing. It's just cheaper. Um, the reason for this is they took off a 20% of the purchase because you're doing it directly to them and you are bypassing that 30% tax that Apple does. Uh, Epic Games has stated their issues with the 30% tax that Apple has in the past. They stated their issues with Google. I believe they worked out something with Google because they put um they they made their own version of the app on their own site for Android users, and eventually it did come to the regular Play Store, I believe at a less like a less percentage tax. Um, so I believe they worked something out with Google in a personal basis. I'm not 100% on that, but Epic has been pushing against this huge tax thing for a while. That's why they made the Epic Games launcher um, to compete with Steam because Steam does a big 30% tax on each game as well and all DLC, all that. It, that that's the problem here that, that, yes, we get that they can get a huge tax for buying a game, but it's kind of crazy that every time someone buys an in-game purchase or microtransactions that, they ha that Apple's making a cut of that, 30% cut of that. So it's kind of crazy because, like, microtransactions could be much cheaper if it was directly to tied to the company such as epic games so like it's kind of crazy how all this work and epic's ceo tim sweeney says apple's fight is about the basic freedoms of all consumers and developers and i get where he's coming from the way they went about it, a lot of people don't like because it seems so set up and it seems like they're kind of taking advantage of their younger audience that they would go out and like talk shit on Twitter essentially and fight against Apple and yell at them and blah, 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 blah. They knew what they were doing all around. I don't really think they had bad intentions. I think they just wanted to prove a point and they knew what they were doing. Um, they set all this up so that Apple would sue them. They knew Apple would sue them. They broke the terms and service with Apple on purpose. Soon as a Apple, or no, I'm sorry, Apple wouldn't sue them. Apple would ban their uh, their game from the, the uh, App Store because of breaking the terms of service. But Epic was ready to go, like right away with a lawsuit. Like it was so predetermined and pre-set up they had a huge lawsuit, and if you actually read through the lawsuit, if you look through the list, um, I believe, yeah, Devin Nash over on YouTube, he broke this down, awesome video, gave me some very clear insight on what was going down. Um, it reads in there that Epic Games wants no financial compensation whatsoever. They want to break up the monopoly that Apple has on the market that's it i think that's super super awesome of them it is definitely still a little bit of a personal thing on their end like they're trying to game the system in some way but the, in the end regardless of what their intentions are whether it's it's you know to try to help themselves or not they are still helping a lot of developers at the same time um I, I think this is really cool, honestly. There needed to be somebody to fight back. Apparently, Spotify is joining in on this. They're jumping on the, the bandwagon, and they're saying, screw you, Apple. Um, there's a lot of companies that would have tried to fight against Apple and Google in this these situations, 
but they don't have the financial means to do so. And Epic Games has that Fortnite Buku Bucks, so they can just throw money at this lawsuit. And any judge with a sane mind is going to try to do something about this. Because Apple does have a chokehold on the market, along with Google, there really isn't any other open-ended services that we can uh, tie to to buy our stuff like PC is a whole different world you can get epic games you play steam all that stuff doesn't necessarily mean this stuff is super cheap comparatively but at times there is a lot of deals there's a lot of different ways when you get a game directly from the source it can be a lot cheaper because they're not being taxed and so that's a great thing for consumers and then for developers they're making more money so smaller developers are getting making out horribly on services like steam apple and google like they're getting 30 percent of their money just taken immediately that's a lot of money considering the other say 40 percent another 40 percent is like you know them paying regular taxes they're paying you know just non-profit essentially so they're probably only making around 20 to 30 percent profit on every game they sell and that's not much when it comes to an indie game or something like that so just wanted to talk about that a little bit um if you want to dig into that story there's so much information out there right now but personally i think tim sweeney and epic games they're doing a good thing overall for the industry i really hope this lawsuit work turns out good probably not going to see any results from it for at least a few years but it's definitely interesting. Um, and speaking of indies and indie developers, last thing I wanted to mention real quick, um, tomorrow at 12 Eastern, we are getting a 20 minute long Nintendo Direct Indie World Showcase. So we are getting a bunch of indie game news, bunch of drops on what's going on. Um, there's been quite a few games uh, revealed recently, like back in March or so, so expect to see some of those games popping up. If you're a big Switch fan, if you're a big indie fan, go check this out tomorrow. I'm sure you'll be pleased to see what they have to announce, and as Nintendo always does, I'm sure they're going to be dropping games day and date. As soon as they announce them, boom, they're going to be up on the store, so definitely go check that out. I'm sure you guys won't be disappointed. I know I am, and thanks for watching, guys. I appreciate it. Just wanted to get you another roundup in there, and I was super excited about that Ghost of Tsushima news, so I had to talk about it, and I'm fine. <laughs> All right, guys, much love. I appreciate you watching. Come check us out on uh, Rarity underscore TV on Twitch. We're about to go live in a few hours. Come hang out. Appreciate you. Peace out, and keep on gaming. Yeah.